Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit that resurrected the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of life, the Spirit of eternity, the Spirit of peace, the Spirit that brings forth from inside of each person he comes upon a fountain. He makes them a fountain. It's very nice. The Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit of God, may He guide you, guide you, direct, lead your thoughts, your ideas, your heart. Oh, may the Holy Spirit come upon you all, all of you who are thirsty for the truth. <clears throat> Yesterday, I was meditating in my fast and reading the first chapter of the book of Luke. And when Mary, Mary went to visit her, her cousin, she went to visit Elizabeth, and then she, when she heard that Elizabeth was pregnant, pregnant, because the Lord had visited Elizabeth. The Lord had visited her and had revealed to her that she was going to be a mother. And indeed, she became a mother, even though she was in a very advanced age. And Mary went to see her. But when Mary went to visit her, she also had been revealed because the Spirit of the Lord or the same angel, Gabriel, that went to Elizabeth also went to see Mary. And when he revealed to her that she was going to be a mother and from her the Son of God would be born. So, to summarize, Mary, so happy, so joyful, said like this. Pay attention, my friend. Pay close attention. Mary said, I will read from the holy text as it is written. And Mary said, Colin, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Well, Think with me. Think just a little bit. If Mary, the Virgin Mary, which in, up until this point she was a virgin, if she says here, my soul magnifies the Lord, is because she is positioning herself in the place of what? Of a servant, isn't it? She's saying, my soul magnifies the Lord, meaning that she places herself as a servant, and she magnifies him as a servant. She magnifies the Lord. So how could she be the mother of the Lord? Not at all. If she magnifies the Lord, 
then the Lord is greater than the servant. So she says, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. So God was her, her Savior. So how could she be the mother of God? How? How? Which means she was a servant. And as a servant, she was used to give birth to the one who would come to be the Savior of humanity, or better, of those who believe in Him, in Jesus. And then she says like this, pay attention how Mary was nice. She says, for He has regarded the lowly state of His maid servant. Look how strong. I'll read the text again. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Which means He was her Savior. God was Mary's Savior. God used Mary to bring to this world, His Son, as God uses people nowadays to preach the gospel and to bring salvation to them. So, God has been using us. He is my Savior and I am a servant. I never, ever, in no time will consider myself or no one will or, or can consider me as, let's say, Lord, I'm a servant. And Mary said, I repeat again, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, for He has regarded the lowly lowly state, the smallness and insignificance of his maid servant, for he regarded the lowly state of his servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, not as a mother of God, but blessed. And indeed, she was blessed. She is blessed because through her came our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Someone had to be used. A virgin had to be used. And Mary was the chosen one. For he has regarded, he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant, which means in the insignificance of his servant, not his mother, his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. How wonderful! And holy is his name. And then she adds more. And his mercy. His mercy, the mercy of the Almighty and Holy One is on those who fear Him from generation to generation. And this subject is what we are going to talk about during these following days, the fear of God. Here, Mary, directed by the Holy Spirit, says, and His mercy, His mercy is on those who fear Him from generation to generation. So it's for the children, the children of the children of the children. And always, His mercy will always follow the children of those who fear Him, of the person who fears Him.
So do you want to guarantee an inheritance that is eternal for your children? Then fear God. You woman, you man, fear God. Because if you fear God, here it's written, the Holy Spirit is the one that put these words in Mary's mouth of the Virgin Mary. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation, which means my children and my children's children and the children of the children of my children <laughs> will follow God's mercy, will have God's mercy upon them from generation to generation upon those who fear Him. So those who are wise, they fear God. By the way, the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. The wise ones are not the ones that have diplomas, that have a PhD in this or that and the other, who speaks many languages, who is a polyglot, that person that created the airplane, for example, those who invented the computer, the internet, none of these. These people have knowledge, they had knowledge. But wise, wisdom, wisdom is only for those who fear the Lord. So, for example, you could be the, let's say, the most lay person on earth and know nothing, know nothing, zero, and still be a wise person. Did you know that? My father was wise. My mother was wise. And the truth, my dear friend, is that wisdom comes from God. Comes from God. My father was wise despite of being a very rough man, but he was wise because he created us under a certain fear. I learned to fear God with my father my dad, because I feared him. And with the fear that I had of him, later on I came to know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then I began to fear God. And then, indeed, today I know what it is to fear God. When I feared my father, at the time that he was alive, I would try ev to do everything right. I would try to have a behavior that would not displease him because if he would find out that I had any done anything wrong, like sin, let's put it this way, I would be punished. So I, I didn't want to be punished. I was afraid. I had fear. So, I would live within a standard that showed fear towards my, my father. And I learned to fear God when I met the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, when the Holy Spirit revealed himself to me. The fear, then, is fundamented upon a word, which is obedience. Whoever fears God obeys his word. Whoever fears the Lord lives within obedience to the word of God, to righteousness. But those who don't know righteousness, Bishop, how about those who don't know the word of God? Well, those who don't know the word of God, they have their conscience, a conscience of what is right and what is wrong. But Bishop, my conscience doesn't accuse me anything. I live my life doing what, what I want and so on, probably then your conscience is already seared, which means it's already definitely, let's say, 
numb concerning what is right or what is wrong. Many people have such conscience, a conscience that is already seared. But this is a subject for another time. But what I would like you to know is this teaching, this great powerful teaching that the Holy Spirit gives us through His servant, the one that served as an instrument to bring into the world His Holy Son, the Lord Jesus. And she said, My spirit, my soul, magnifies the Lord because of the revelation God had given her. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state, the lowly state, not in the sense of, in a bad sense. It's a sense of humility here. She was small. She was just dust, dust, just a, 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 a little dust before God. And that's why she said that God regarded the lowly state of his maid servant, not of his mother, as the world says, oh, the mother of God. No, God doesn't have a mother. Can you imagine God having a mother? It makes no sense. If God has a mother, then his mother is greater than him, isn't she? You just have to think a little bit, just a little bit. So, she considered herself lowly. She was, was just dust. Oh, I'm, I'm just dust. I'm just a servant. I'm just like a little grain of sand. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. And indeed she is. She is blessed. No doubt about that. She was a blessed woman because she was used as God's instrument, just as God has used us to help you. How many people nowadays have the Holy Spirit, they have salvation that is guaranteed to them now, they have their life transformed due to the work of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God all over the world. But is it my work? Would I have wisdom? Would I have this wisdom? Would I have this knowledge? Would I have, let's say, this talent to do such work? No way. What happened is that God as well, just as He considered Mary in the lowly state of His maid servant, then He considers me as well in the lowly state of His servant. I'm small. I'm just a grain of dust, dust, not even sand, because the grain of sand is much bigger than a grain of dust. It's just a small grain of dust. That's how we are. But he regarded us and thanked him for that. And why did he regard that? Because of the fear that I learned to have towards his holy word. And this is how it was with Mary. She was God-fearing. And that's why she says, the mercy of the Lord is on those who fear him from generation to generation. So since Abraham, even before Abraham and Noah, and then Mary, Mary, came to fear God. I mean, God knew that somewhere down the line in the story of the Israelites would be born a young lady who feared him, a young lady that obeyed the word of God, that was pure, holy, immaculate, a young lady that had the fear of the Lord within her. And that's why she was chosen to be 
the mother of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tomorrow I will speak more about this, concerning this fear, because she experienced such fear. She was counted amongst the blessed ones. She's one of the blessed ones because her father and the father of her father and so on until you go back to the very beginning of humanity and God had already chosen Mary because she feared the Lord and she indeed placed herself in the position in the lowly position of a maid servant which means the smallest of all servants. How nice is that? But her fear made her be chosen by God, chosen by God. You who are watching me right now, how is your life? Is it cursed? There's a curse and everything that you do goes wrong. You are walking backwards. But you can change this. You can change your story. All you have to do is use a little bit of your intellect, your intelligence, your wisdom. The information that you have from the Word of God and change the direction of the way that you act. Fear God. Fear the Lord, and you will be blessed as Mary was. That's all, nothing else. Be wise. Be wise, my dear friend. Fear the Lord. This is the beginning of wisdom. It's the start of wisdom. Is the fear of the Lord. And this fear is summarized in the word obedience to the word of God. May God bless you all, and this week is the week that we are working to bring an end to the curse in the lives of those who have been cursed. And there is nothing more powerful to cancel or neutralize any curse than obedience to the Word of God. If you obey the Word of God, then the curse the shadow of the curse that is over you will disappear because the light of salvation will shine upon your life. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.